So I mentioned uh, in the last tutorial that we would look at a way of speeding up the rendering of the points. But before we get on to that, I should just talk about the changes I've made to the scene file since that last tutorial. So one thing is I've added a render node here that we're going to use to render our final result. Uh, it's essentially the same as the earlier render node. We've got it set to micropolygon rendering, but I'm allowing motion blur. And to get that to work on my objects here, I will need on my object with all the particles in it, on the render tab, sampling subturb, to turn on geometry velocity blur. And that will allow it to use the V attributes that are on all of these particles to work out the uh, motion blur. So I've just rendered out a, a test render, which I'll show you. Uh, you won't be able to see all of it because it's too large, um, but there it is. And it looks pretty good. And you can see it's now got shadows and so on. It's taking uh, not, in fact, uh, taking about two minutes to render on, on my machine. About half of that is rendering the shadows from the depth map shadow map that I've got switched on on the distant light here. Uh, and this is creating a depth map shadow map. On the distant light, by the way, it's always worth having a little bit of shadow blur. Uh, if you have shadow blur set to zero, you can get some artifacts in your render when you're rendering a lot of particles. So how do we improve that render time? Uh, by reducing the amount of time taken for calculating shadows. Well, the answer is to create the shadow map from something a lot simpler than the 5 million particles that we're rendering here. And what we need to do for that is render out some volumes. So let me set up a container that's going to contain, let's call it uh, volume representation, for example. And rather than using the all particles, uh, indeed I'm going to turn the display of that off temporarily, I'm going to use the source particles. Uh, which, if you remember right, are, I think, only about... And it's going to calculate now. It's running through the simulation. But I think it's only going to be a few hundred thousand, 500, 500,000 particles rather than 5 million. So it's going to be a little bit easier to calculate. And then uh, here, so let me go into this, delete the file node. I should object merge in those particles which are in the source particles node. And then I want to create a volume. Uh, and I can do that using a VDB from particles node. So I'll lay one down. And before that's selected, I want to change this so we're creating a fog VDB, because that'll be useful for creating the shadows. And let's put the point radius down to point, point 0.2 and see what we get with that. So select this. It'll take a while to think about it. And there we are. That's our, that's our particle form. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's see whether we can reduce that down even further. Nope. One five, perhaps. Nope. Looks like two. And we're going to use this to render our shadow map. So I'm going to need a shader. So let's go into the shop context here, or rather into the material palette. And let me find the volume shaders. And I'm going to just use a, a basic smoke shader. So let's set that up so it's using the basic smoke shader. And let's set the parameters. I happen to know uh, that to make this look good, I need to get have a shadow density of about uh, 10. The color is pretty much irrelevant. So we're going to trick Houdini into rendering our millions of particles 
but the light will use the shadow map that it creates by rendering this much simpler volume. So I need to create a mantra node, which let's call it render volume. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to render the shadow maps. Let me just have a look at our distant light. And we can see that the shadow map is set up to point to a file. Now, by default, this would be set up just to store the shadow map in Houdini and not write it to disk. But I've set this up so it's going to store a shadow map at each frame to disk. And I've also changed the resolution here so it's 1024 to 1024 to be a bit bigger. And at the moment, it's got auto generate shadow map switched on, which means every time I render a frame, it's going to regenerate that shadow map. Now, when I'm rendering the millions of particles, in fact, I don't want it to regenerate that shadow map. I want it to use the one that's already on disk. So I need to turn that off. Uh, and I also uh, need to go into the node where we're going to render those particles, the final render node mantra final node and I need to go down here and make sure that we've got auto generate shadow maps turned off on this one however we want auto which is going to render out our volume representation we want auto generate shadow maps turned on and we also want to have a take so let's add a take now a take is a way of rendering a scene using a slightly different set of parameters from the ones that you would use normally. So in this case, basically, essentially, when I use this render node, I'm going to use the main take. And when I use this shader node, I'm going to use this other take called shadow map. And at the moment, they're both the same. There's nothing in this side of the take list. So all of the parameters in both of those versions are the same. But of course, what I actually want to do is go into our distant light, go to the parameters, and on the auto-generate shadow, shadow map, I need to right-click, and I need to say include in take. And this allows me to edit this and switch it on. So if I now go back to the take list, we can see that this parameter is listed and listed is on. And that means that if I then use my mantra render volume node and I make sure that the let me switch this back to the main take and I make sure that the take here is set to shadow map this is going to mean that when this take is being rendered it's going to regenerate all of those shadow maps when this is being rendered it won't uh, you can uh, by the way uh, turn off uh, the create image from viewing camera on the render volume node. In that way it'll just render the shadow maps and not render out the main image. But in this case I'm actually going to keep that on and I'm hit, going to hit the render button up here, render to end play, and I'm going to render frame range 80 to 100. So let me start that rendering. And we'll perhaps uh, pause the video while it's uh, creating that first image. And then I'll bring it up when they're all done. And of course, I've made a mistake here. Uh, because what I've not done is set this to make sure it's rendering the objects we want and not the objects we don't. So the only object that we want this to render, it doesn't. we don't want to render the particles, the only thing we want to render is the volume representation. And if I set the candidate and force objects to the volume representation, then that's it's all it's going to render. And we can leave the candidate lights at uh, everything because we've only got one light. So let me try that again. And I'll pause the video. So I've now uh, rendered out uh, a single frame of that so you can see <clears throat> what it's like. This is the volume representation.
and you can see it's shadowed, and we're going to be able to reuse that shadow map in order to affect our particles. So let me do that, um, and I'm going to go back to rendering with Mantra Final, and in this case I need to set up the objects so that the candidate objects are the all particles, and the force objects are all particles. So that's going to make sure we don't render the volume. And we're going to render this with the current take, which is main, so it's not going to re-render the, the shadow map. So what we should see when I now render this is that we'll get some shadowed particles, uh, which are some shadowed particles which are rendered using the shadow map from the volume. So let me just render that out. And again, I'm just going to pause the video while this uh, renders out. And so that's rendered out now. Um, we can have a look at it. And we can see that we've got our, our particles with some nice, uh, oops, with some nice shadowing. So you can address that shadowing here on the node for the distant light. And the parameters that adjust the shadowing are here, the, obviously the shadow color and the shadow intensity and the shadow blur. These are all things that can affect your shadowing. Uh, you may wonder, uh, by the way, here in the shop context, uh, we've now got a shader here, which is a mantra, basic mantra surface shader, which we're using to shade the particles. Obviously the constant uh, shader didn't interact with the light. How is it that these particles can be shaded um, when they don't have a normal? You see, if we have a look at our geometry spreadsheet for our particles, uh, let's look at the source particles, uh, we can see it doesn't, it doesn't have a normal. Well, the answer is that by uh, default, this render, the render defaults are to assign a point normal uh, which is pointing at the camera. If you tick this box then the attribute on the point will be used. So once we've rendered out all of those shadow maps using the render volume node <coughs> here uh, we can render out our whole sequence using the mantra final node and that's going to render out all these particles here uh, 5 million or whatever. So I'll just uh, show you the result of the final render and then I'll talk you through the scene uh, that I've tweaked a little bit in order to get that final render. So a couple of things have changed in the scene file to make that render. Uh, the first is that uh, in the auto.network, in the emitter source node, I've increased the number of particles up to 500,000, which is about the maximum that my system can comfortably handle. Uh, we've still got 10 sequences here on the wedge node. So we end up with around 50 million particles, so about 10 times as many as we were looking at earlier. Now in order to accommodate that, I have made one tweak to the take that we use with the node that renders out the shadow maps, because obviously 500,000 particles is still a hell of a lot. So as part of that shadow map take, I'm now resetting that emission down back to 50,000 particles a second just when we're rendering out those shadow maps. So that speeds up the rendering of the shadow maps. And then I'm taking everything into, when the result has been rendered, I'm taking it into a compositing network which is very simple. Uh, these nodes over here are just setting up a sort of vignette type background. You can see it's a little bit darker around the corners here. Uh, 
and then we just composite uh, the final result over that and let me just wind this forward so you can see it and that's what we're we're getting and and then I just render that all out so anyway that's how we produce this render of millions of particles uh, I hope it's been useful there's one more part uh, to the tutorial which is going to look at how we introduce some fluid motion into this kind of scenario by using a fluid simulation in the Autodoc network, but we'll cover that in a brief further tutorial.